Recently, Blair Walnuts posted this video and my inbox was blowing up with messages like this. Michelle, please respond to Blair Walnuts' fucking video. She's hurting every single young girl that watches her with this information. She needs to be deplatformed because she's going buck wild after her stupid breakup. You need to tell her to get over it and get her shit together. And then the others went like this. Hi Michelle, I noticed you and Blair Walnuts follow each other. I really enjoy both of your content and recently Blair has been under a lot of fire and I personally think it's being blown out of the water. But will you be making a video on this? I just really feel bad for her right now. Guess who got a response? The, the second one. Don't tell me what to do and what I need to do because now I can't do it because you told me to and I'm extremely petty. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. This video is sponsored by me. Click the link below to support my protein donut business, Proto Bakery. Thank you. Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel, but if you're new, welcome. My name is Michelle McDaniel, AKA Grown Up Pebbles. I'm a personal trainer, proud mother of a pup, and a chihuahua. A past theater nerd gone grown up cosplayer, and this is my channel. My thoughts will probably offend you, or I share my thoughts, they will probably offend at least one person because whenever you share your opinion online, someone has to write you a whole novel telling you why your opinion is wrong and why you should have the same opinion as them. So whatever is offending you today, let us know in that comment section. This is the place to do it. And while you're down there, you might as well hit the subscribe button because I post one to three times a week, sometimes dressed in cosplay, sometimes dressed what I would call normal. And welcome to another episode of Who the F*** is a series where we talk about popular YouTubers and dig into their content and channel. And today we're asking the question, who the f is Blair Walnut? I just took a DNA test, turns out I'm 100% made of walnuts. She's just so nutty, she belongs in a tree. So today I'm trying five viral makeup hacks to see if they're worth the time, the money, or the effort. For real, she's like kind of crazy. And I like it. But many people have been saying, what happened to her? She's a little too nutty. And when this video got posted, many of you decided to slip and slide into my inbox. So let's start from the beginning. Blair Walnuts, born in Bulgaria, but now living in Mexico. Blair is a bubbly blonde that cries 43 times a day, according to her Twitter. She travels all over the world, loves fashion, food, boys, and showcases all of that on her YouTube channel that has over 800,000 subscribers. Safety first, children. Her most popular videos are her I tried X diet. For example, she will go on popular celebrities or YouTubers diets and try it for a certain amount of time. She ate like a K-pop star. She ate like a football player. She even ate like Trisha Paytas and gained weight. Being like Trisha for the day was really fun because I didn't have to cook anything and I'm a lazy bitch so this was great. The only not fun thing was that I gained 10 pounds in one day and I'm not really sure how this happened so please send help or an ambulance or Jesus. Bye. Yeah, that's predictable. I would have rolled on out of here if I ate like Trisha Paytas. And she even ate like Voldemort. Oops, I mean, Jeffree Star. She is the diet try it girl. Ooh, shh, don't let Demi Lovato hear that. On her YouTube channel, she also showcased her boyfriend into the show, Your Wet Sock, but known in real life as Nick Stone Street. They were together for a few years and then Blair posted the video, We're Getting Married. Everything seemed like it was perfect. Two YouTubers coming together, making videos together, and then soon tying the knot and will have many YouTuber babies until they broke up. And according to her audience, she started to change. And they say they are watching her quickly spiral downwards mentally. Let's get into the real reason why you're here. The reason why people were so upset, disappointed, and saying the wonderful words that I love hearing on the internet, do better. Recently, Blair posted this video that made quite a bit of people upset. How to lose 20 pounds in three months, where she gave advice on how she dropped a lot of weight from intermittent fasting, from according to you guys, refusing to eat and just drinking coffee. Many Many people were saying she is promoting eating disorder behavior and that eating disorder, because there are many remember, is 
They are saying she clearly has an eating disorder, so basically diagnosing her, saying that she is way too skinny now and she needs more body fat and that her before was way better than her body is now. And she is clearly unhealthy. But I have a theory. Want to hear it? Of course you do. Skinny fat. Skinny fat is when a generally small or thin person looks just thin and not have much body fat. But then they strip off all their clothes and boom, there it is. They actually have a high percentage of body fat just on a smaller frame. A popular YouTuber that I can think of from the top of my head would be Mikey. She was not a quote unquote fat girl, but she was small and had a lot of body fat. And shocker, a lot of these generally skinny fat people don't work out very much. They lack muscle and strength along with a very poor diet. So they aren't as heavy as an obese person and they generally pass for being healthy. But in reality, these are some of the most unhealthiest people I have ever worked with. Blair used to be bigger, having more body fat than she does now. Keep in mind, she is very young. When I see skinny, fat, 35 plus people, there's a lot of saggy skin, cellulite, because naturally you lose muscle as you age, AKA called atrophy. But now as a trainer, I see many slim women come to me who need to lose weight and the ongoing comment is, why do you need to lose weight? You're already thin. You must have anorexia or something. When in fact, these people are very out of shape, have extra body fat, from eating too much junk food and are in a calorie surplus because of it. So my theory is after watching this video is that people see a small woman who went through a horrible breakup and is pretty nutty. I'm gonna get a good angle of my flowers but I can't get one. And automatically think, no, not think but declare that she has an eating disorder. And I have to disagree with the ongoing popular opinion that she clearly has an eating disorder, at least from the comments. So why do I say that? Because I do many of the things that are in this video. Except I look like this, huh? So I wanted to break down this video in grave detail. Sit back, get your popcorn, it's gonna be long. Because I also had an eating disorder, but not the one that everyone wants to scream about. <laughs> Looking at you, Tess Holiday. No, I have binge eating disorder. Yeah, you guys forgot about that one. That's how I'm gonna be looking at this video. Someone who used to binge so hard that I would throw up, and then now that I threw up, I would have more space in my stomach and I would eat more and I couldn't stop. Okay, so I give you all Blair Walnuts, five tips on how she lost weight in 20 days. Hmm, the most common question I get all over my social media, how did you lose so much weight so fast? So in the video, Blair says she went from 147 to 130 pounds. So basically I went from 147 pounds to 130 pounds. That's 17 pounds. Blair. Liar. Now I know why people were upset. Kidding. She probably rounded up. I learned that in like elementary school. You're allowed to do it. How did you lose so much weight so fast? There's no exercise involved in this. I do not go to the gym. I don't count my calories. It's intermittent fast. So from the get go, she is hooking people in. Easy, simple, 20 pounds in only three months. In a couple months and I'll show you all my secrets and how I'm able to keep it off without really trying or putting in any effort because I'm a low, low effort, effort kind of gal lately. Yeah. <laughs> and let me clarify, losing weight is easy and simple. It's literally calorie deficit. Eat less calories than you burn. Some people will fight you on that, but that's scientifically what it is. But the process of actually staying consistent is very, Hard. How long do you guys usually stick to a diet? A week, two, a month? It takes months, sometimes years. So basically number one, the most important thing that I think that I do is intermittent fast. So intermittent fasting, a lot of people do this and as someone who binged, I never recommend intermittent fasting to people who have binging problems. Why? Because the moment we feel an intense hunger, we run to the kitchen and think just one Oreo, just one is all we need. And then once that one Oreo graces the tip of our tongue, we lose control and we've already eaten at least half a pack within five minutes with milk and ice cream. Yeah, I've done it. So if you are someone who really struggles with binge eating, I really don't recommend that. I'm not from the anorexia side of EDs, but I would think it wouldn't be the best thing for them either to restrict their food, but I'm guessing the people from that 
side of the fence can tell me in the comment section. But for binge eaters, we need to eat before we have that intense hunger because we can't make rational decisions when we get into the danger zone. I try to just have espresso or a double espresso or a triple espresso in the morning, hot with nothing else. I have water throughout the day and then when I actually get really, really, really hungry, like I feel like I'm gonna break up with my 17 boyfriends, flee the country, fire all my editors, then I decide it's finally time to eat. At that point, I will eat anything I feel like but usually it's fruit or eggs so I was reading a lot of comments saying that wow she pushes herself to not eat like forces herself to not eat and I read comments before I watched the video and it made it sound a lot more intense I was waiting her for her to say you know like oh I'm starving and then I just I gotta keep pushing it just can't eat I was expecting you know to kind of like cringe back and be like whoa Blair but I, I feel like it was a little blown out of proportion there. As someone who binged, I was someone that had to push myself to not eat because I could eat all day. In the video, Blair also said that she had an overeating problem or overeating, you know, junk food type problem. I do like french fries though. I order french fries with a lot of mayonnaise. There is no food groups that I am against. I eat absolutely everything. I eat bread, pasta, chips. Like I said, I think it's the lingo that she's using here and the fact that she's skinny. I actually get really, really, really hungry. Now, like I said, I am a binger, so I can't can't wait until I'm really, really hungry. But watching Blair's content, she really dramatizes everything. So I can't speak for her. And at the same time, when I rewatched it, did she mean when she's actually hungry? Anyway, the reoccurring comment was, she's pushing herself to not eat. Let me explain what I mean when I say I would push myself to not eat. Push myself as in, uh, am I bored right now? Or can I actually wait to eat? I'm not doing the 18 hour windows, of course, but I have clients that just don't like eating through the day and prefer to have bigger meals even though she said she ate fruit and boiled eggs but fruit and boiled eggs can get pretty high in calories one boiled egg is 70 calories have four and that's 280 plus your fruit you're over 300 calories probably around 350 360 depending on what you're eating if you're eating high calorie fruit you can easily get up to 400 to 500 calories so once again the the food that she showed us was very vague and like quick it wasn't very detailed which is something I feel the video lacked details but most of her videos are like this, at least the recent ones. She talks fast, shows quick clips, and boom, bam, done. But she doesn't count calories, so we don't know. But what we do know is that she used to count calories. So similar to Obese to Beast, who also doesn't count calories, and me, who doesn't count calories every single day, I take it she can get a ballpark number of what she's consuming. Not an exact, but just a ballpark, since she's done it before. So I'm just going to believe her, because who am I to say no? You're lying. <laughs> what the fuck? Should I go do that to obese to beast when he says he eats 3,000 calories? No. So she says she eats 1,500 to 2,000 calories. My bone is slipping. I didn't glue it down because it wouldn't stay. Fine. So it's not like she's recommending anyone to have an intense low amount of calories. She's above 1,200. I've seen people promoting 1,200 cal. That's a little bit. I need a lot more than that normally. She's promoting 1,500 to 2,000. That's plenty of food, especially if you are eating whole foods, fruits, protein, which in the video you'll see that that's what she eats. I try to just have espresso or a double espresso or a triple espresso in the morning. So people were very upset about her saying she drinks a cup of coffee to help with hunger. Like I said, I am someone who overeats. So drinking water, hot tea, not coffee. I hate coffee because it gives me headaches and makes me feel sick for some reason. But for someone who binged, that tip was a lifesaver because my body didn't understand how to just not eat. I would always constantly eat. I just love to eat. Eat. And the thing is, is that drinking water between meals or maybe just drinking water before I eat would help me, one, fill my stomach so that I'm not overeating, two, help me with my dehydration, which a lot of people struggle with. There has been so many times that I'm halfway through a gallon of ice cream and I'm like, hmm, kind of thirsty. Drink water and I'm like, damn it. It was literally dehydration and it would just get in the way of my craving. So drinking water before meals or in between meals was something that really helped me. I understand that it's something that anorexic people do to help fill their stomach, but from what I got from the video, she was just saying she likes to drink water, hot fluids to help with limited hunger. She's not saying she's starving. She's just saying that it helps her with dehydration, eating a little bit less so that she can lose weight and that was her goal. But like I said, I come from a different community. That tip in itself, drinking water helped 
so much. If you're a binger out there, try drinking water before you binge. You won't binge as much, or you might just not binge at all. Also, I don't know if she does this through the day, but she says she drinks liquid in the morning, but from what I see when it comes to intermittent fasting, don't you need to drink? Drinking water during an intermittent fast is usually permitted. In some cases, water and other clear liquids may also be allowed for up to two hours before medical procedures, although specific guidelines vary. Other fast-friendly drinks include black coffee, unsweetened tea, and, and flavored or sparkling water, all the things she says she drinks during her fast. So I'm still very confused why people are saying all of this. Like I said, I'm not a fan of fasting. I don't understand not eating for long periods of time, but some people like a very small window to eat in because some people just don't like eating throughout the day, which is crazy to me. I love eating throughout the day, but some don't, and we're not all the same. And she says that she ha likes a small window of where she eats, and so during that 18 hours, she drinks. And then after that, she's eating 1,500 to 2,000 calories. I'm not too sure, like she's not saying she's starving herself, so I'm still waiting waiting for that whoa curl you have an ED. Tip two. My second tip is to basically hack the calorie system. Okay, how are we gonna hack this calorie system? So I don't actually count my calories, but I do hack my calories. Does that make sense? No. So I try not to eat highly caloric foods. That is a great tip. I tell my clients all the time, find low calorie foods that you can eat a lot of instead of calorie dense food. That was a great tip because when I was trying to lose weight, I would follow just generic fitness type meal plans on Google. And what is the, just the generic fitness girl breakfast? 12 almonds and a half cup of oatmeal and a half to full banana on top. And that would be around 400 calories for almonds, a half cup of oatmeal, and a banana. And I would make my oatmeal, eat my almonds, and then within three minutes, holy shit, I'm starving again. I needed low calorie foods because then I can eat in high volume and then I'm actually full, which is the goal because a lot of people who struggle with hunger, if they are hungry, they are going to go overeat. So if you eat low calorie foods that you can eat a lot of, then you won't be hungry. That was a great tip. Low calorie food in high volume. Oatmeal doesn't do shit for me. Almonds definitely don't do shit for me. I could eat a pound of almonds and be starving. So I try not to eat highly caloric foods or I don't eat a lot of them. So I love chips and guacamole, but that's one of the foods that I can eat a thousand calories of in two seconds. So I really watch it with chips and guac. Right? Yes, that's also a great tip. That's something you should watch out for. Chips in general, 150 calories, 170 calories for one ounce. Do you know how much an ounce is? Usually around a handful, I have small hands. You dip those chips and add some guacamole or some other kind of sauce, it is over. Okay, your calories are gonna be high as Actually, Jeff Cavalier made a video saying to watch out for foods like avocados, bananas, you know, junk food in general. Don't exclude them, but just watch out for them because they have a lot of calories for a little portion. Guys, there's nobody that realizes the benefits of healthy fats more than me and knows that guacamole is a great source of that. However, Whoever stopped at a tablespoon of guacamole because that has 40 calories in it. But what we do is of course we go overboard and the average American eats 10 to 12 tablespoons of guacamole. No one calls Jeffy anorexic for recommending watching out for chips and guacamole anyway. The goal is to try to eat a lot of food, not be hungry, and then you can lose weight very easily. After that, once I found out low calorie foods and eating high vault that I can eat in high volume, it seemed very, very effortless. I wasn't hungry, I wasn't struggling. Oh, and the water tip once I started dr actually drinking water it did feel very very easy once I got into that routine and I was eating high calorie protein bars and high calorie almonds and high calorie foods where I was starving all the time then I had an issue and you know what when I started losing weight eating a lot of food that's when people were like oh something's wrong are you okay like I was eating 1500, 1800 calories of like huge meals because I eat in high volume and then people have issues. It's very, very odd. Once again, I think it's just the way that she says it and because she has that ditzy blonde thing. I'm at the hospital because my doctor said either my silicone implant is leaking and I could die or um, I have a breast in my lump and it could be cancer so I could die. So right now I'm on my way to get some scanny scan things so hopefully I don't die. Because she was very body positive before and now she got thin and that makes people feel a certain way. Right? Other things I watch it with is like peanut butter, 
ice cream, protein bars. Once again, all things that you need to watch out for, things that don't really fill me up. If I ever have a protein bar, like even my protein donut, I save it for the end of the day because I make sure to get all of my whole meals in first and then I have my little reward, my little dessert, a protein donut, which I am very excited about at the end of the day. Link below. I literally hate cooking. I literally rather order like an $8, eight euro salad and then not cook all day than spend time grocery shopping, cleaning and cooking. Um, so basically when I eat at a restaurant, I try to either go for salad with no cheese and like very little dressing. I like to do just olive oil and vinegar. I go for like raw food, so if I can, or it's on the menu, I eat like tuna, tuna tartare, tuna carpaccio, a salmon poke bowl with no rice. I don't get the rice, I just get the vegetables. Which will help you cut down on calories. Honestly, the meat is probably high in calories already because they usually cook it in oil. So if you help cut out like the car part, it will naturally reduce the calories. And she even said that she eats a lot of the raw vegetables because they don't cook it in oil. Um, um, I try to go for fish and vegetables or meat and vegetables and if it's raw It's even better because there's no calories from the oil so once again She seems very self-aware about the restaurants using a lot of oil how a lot of just the basic dishes at restaurants are very High in calories you guys might see her eating very light things But they're usually very high in calories when you get them from restaurants because they like to cook in oil They want to make it taste better so that people can think that they're an amazing Restaurant when really they just put a lot of fat in it fat makes things taste better But it also adds a shit ton more of calories one gram of fat is nine calories one gram of carbon protein is four So fat is double the calories which is why healthy food at restaurants are usually double the calories of what you could do at home Which is why I don't eat at restaurants because I will save my money and my calories. So then she starts to go through her daily intake. So breakfast is a hard boiled egg, an avocado, tomato, and fruit. Lunch is raw fish and veggies, and dinner is soup and salad. I kept seeing comments saying, oh my God, soup? I would get soup when I was struggling with my ED. Just because someone eats soup doesn't mean that they have an ED. I love how the internet is like, you can't diagnose people, but, but then if someone loses weight and they're thin, then all of a sudden they have an ED, they have a problem, and they are responsible for other people's issues. And then for dinner, I'll do like a soup and a salad. Like I try to keep things very light. I, I personally love soup. There are so many low calorie soups that I can use as a snack that I can have as a main meal while adding other food, and it helps me eat a lot of vegetables and not really notice because it's soup. Something else I notice about the comments is that they were so focused on what she does to lose weight, they didn't even mention all the junk food she says that she loves and occasionally likes to eat, like mayo dipped in french fries. I do like french fries though. I order french fries with a lot of mayonnaise. That is definitely calorie dense food, and for some reason I'm thinking of Patrick now. Is mayonnaise an instrument? But it sounds like she cut out a lot of junk food, which will help many people, obese or skinny fat, lose some extra weight they probably don't need, and if anything, cutting out french fries dipped in mayo will give some sweet sweet loving and care to your poor heart so you don't die of a heart attack you know also people are acting like she eats like this all the time if she did it still sounds pretty good vegetables fruit protein but she also posts videos eating chips guacamole and other types of food she literally posted a video eating with her sugar daddy or whatever my sugar daddy was being annoying, so I made him take me to Carbone, New York's most fancy and exclusive restaurant, and I decided to give you guys a review. I let him pick my outfit because that's all he's really good for, and to be honest, the coolest thing here was seeing famous people like the food god TikTok person and eating the bread. The bread is so delicious. It tastes like pizza and it's covered in oil. They also have this gigantic block of Parmesan they give you bites from, and they also give you some vegetables. I look hot eating, don't I? We tried the famous spicy rigatoni and to be honest, it was underwhelming. I would say Gigi Hadid's pasta is way more delicious. There was really hot waiters doing stuff. I would like to flirt with the waiter. I asked for his number, actually, in front of my sugar daddy. I like watching people cook because I can't cook myself. Afterwards, it was time to get dessert, which is usually me, but today we decided to try out their desserts. I wanted a bite of all of them, but he did not let me allow it, so I'm probably going to divorce him now. I would say 10 out of 10 experience, food 5 out of 10. Bye, I hope you enjoyed this. You know when I was eating shit, no one had anything to say about my health. 
When I started losing weight and eating healthier food, all of a sudden my family members came out of the woodworks and had something to say and were concerned about my health and I was going to be anorexic. It's just very annoying when people squirt out eating disorder when you eat less and try to eat healthy, but when you're eating your weight in hot Cheetos, no one says anything. Also, did y'all ever think maybe her past relationship, they ate a lot of food together, huh? I've been there. Then you break up and you're no longer binging with that specific person because you broke up. Hmm? Maybe I know some of y'all have been there. Don't lie to me. She was eating corn dogs and doing mukbangs with her ex. And when you take those out, you're no longer eating a surplus of food that you really don't need. So the scientific thing that's going to happen is that you will lose weight. And she even talked about this in one of her videos. She said her friends don't eat as much as her ex-boyfriend. And so she's naturally just not binging. My third hack that I have for you guys is called the warm liquids hack. And this is what pissed a lot of people off. They said that she is obviously starving and trying to cover it up with warm water. But then she says, okay, this is particularly important. Warm liquids keep your stomach full without you noticing that you're not eating that much. Obviously, I want everyone to be healthy and treat their body right. So please eat enough for your body. So please eat enough for your body. So please eat enough for your body. Literally said this right here. Please eat enough for your body. Please eat enough does not translate into please starve yourself and drink water so that you don't feel like you're starving. So I try to put myself in other people's shoes. And if I was struggling with anorexia, I can see how other people can watch this and think, oh my god, I used to do this, she's skinny now, obviously, there it is. She has an ED because I had an ED. So I know everything that's happening in her life. But for someone who struggles with the opposite end, a lot of those tips were key in how I beat my binge eating disorder. I rarely ever overeat now. I always drink eight to 24 ounces of water before I eat a meal. If I eat out and still want to try to control my calories, I cut out the carb, get the protein and the vegetables. And then of course at night, if I have a craving for something sweet, I'll drink tea. I don't do the intermittent fasting, but if I did, I would think that I would have to drink a lot of water. And I've posted about it multiple times, and the ongoing comment is, wow, thanks for the tip. Sometimes I have the tendency to overeat just because I'm excited about what I'm eating, and I'm excited I'm at lunch, I'm with friends, and I'm talking and just stuffing my face. So if I drink a little bit of hot water before, I will eat the portions I'm supposed to be eating. Yes, that is so me. It really just helps me keep my portion control in check. So does that make me have an eating disorder? Why don't you guys say, I have an eating disorder, hmm? I do most of these tips. Is it because she's thin and I am not? Prejudice, what would that be? I don't know, but it's something, is. The most angry comment I saw was geared towards the thumbnail because she used the word Fat, which I use all the time, which I heard is not supposed to be an offensive word. It's supposed to be liberating people. Why are they getting mad? Because she called a not so fat body fat. Basically, she called her old body fat and commenters said that there are plenty of people who have eating disorders or body issues that have the body that you have before that you're calling fat. And listen, I feel you. I was bigger. I had a lot of body fat. I was with someone who was bigger than all of my friends. And I remember my skinny friends being like, man, I'm such a fat ass. I really need to lose some weight. And I'd be like, wow. If you think you're a fat ass, you must think I am an ogre. And I don't mean Fiona. I mean Shrek. Ogres are like onions. The man ogre. How do you think I feel? I get it. But at the same time, there are skinny, fat people who are thin in clothes, but once you strip off all the clothes and you're just standing there in all your glory, you can tell that that person has a high body fat range and they are the term skinny fat. And also, she called herself fat. She's literally talking about herself and maybe that's the way that she felt. You can't tell people how to feel about themselves, that they, they have every right to feel the way that they want to feel. There's times that I have abs, but I want even more abs, and I think that I need to lose body fat, and if I put that on my Instagram, is that going to make other people feel bad? Because I already have abs, and I'm saying I need to lose more body fat because I have an aesthetic that I wanna go toward? Maybe it will, but that's not really my problem at all. I shouldn't be responsible about how you feel, about how I feel about my body. 
that's kind of weird. See what I'm saying? If she thinks she's fat, she thinks that she's fat. So if you watch the video, Blair actually photoshopped her body to look like it, had more body fat, promoting a sponsor that she signed with, which really upset people. It didn't really upset me, I just thought it was kind of weird. I could see it being funny if you deliver it a certain way, but she pretty much said she photoshopped her pic, and she used certain words so that people click on the video. The reason why I edit my body, especially on thumbnails and things like that, is because the more appealing and drastic the image is, the more likely that a person is to click on it. I rather have this like drastic scary thumbnail you guys click and then you realize you should be grateful and appreciative of your healthy body. Something that a lot of youtubers do but I guess it's very sensitive to a certain community that battles eating disorders. People use fat apps all the time and photoshop themselves all the time so I don't know why people took it like so hard. No wait I do. It's because she's thin. We all know if bigger people make fat jokes or say something fat in it. It's fine. Skinny people <laughs> Cancel. I'm guessing they wanted her to choose different words as in uh, from personal trainer standpoint I would use I have too much body fat not I'm a I'm fat. I'm a fatty type Language if I'm talking to my friends and just being very relaxed and not being professional Then I would be like oh shoot I'm so fat right now. I need to lose weight even when I was bigger it hurt my feelings But then once I became a personal trainer I know a lot of thin people that have a lot of body fat that's fat to them. So the lingo might have been off-putting for some of you guys because she is a small girl already, even though she had a lot of body fat in the thumbnail. I know it's Photoshop, but just keep in mind. She was bigger before. She did lose quite a bit of weight. She just over dramatized the thumbnail. But if we're talking about being professional as like a personal trainer, what I usually say to anyone really is that you have a high amount of body fat. She's a thin person that has a high amount of body fat. But if you're just kicking back with your friends and you're not one of those like I don't want to say social justice people, but maybe people that just have EDs or something. If you're not one of those type of people, so many people say, oh shit, I'm so fat right now. I used to say it all the time, even when I wasn't fat anymore. People say in the bodybuilder world, when they're bulking, they'll say, oh shit, I'm so fat, time to get back on it so that they can go try to win a plastic trophy. And people in the ED world have to realize that not everyone is in that ED world. Now what I do have to say is she gives mixed messages like this. And how good it can feel you eat fruits and vegetables and that you don't need a calorie restrict right there yes you do need a calorie restrict if you want to lose weight or body fat if you are eating at a maintenance or at a calorie surplus you won't lose weight or you will gain weight so that is wrong you have to calorie restrict you don't have to restrict drastically just ever so slightly so remember in the beginning where Blair said she never works out that was a lie she actually does some walking this is why it's important to watch the whole video so she doesn't go to the gym, but she does walk a lot. But my fourth hack, you guys are gonna hate, because I said no gym, right? I don't go to the gym, but I do walk a lot. So you might be thinking, well, she's overdoing cardio because she has problems. She's anorexic, and she might be. I have no idea, can't tell from this video, but she says in the video that she gets around 10,000 steps a day. And some days she doesn't, but she makes sure she is not sitting on her blonde butt cheeks too much and actually moving her body. I would try to walk 10,000 steps a day. Sometimes it's 8,000, sometimes it's 5,000, but I will not have a day where I just sit in the room without walking, I absolutely refuse which I think is great. We are lazy people. When I started my computer job, I noticed I was sitting for most of the time. I got one of those step watches and I was getting around 2,000 steps a day. What the fuck? 10,000 steps is not anything special. It's very average. It's nothing intense. And then her other form of activity is dancing. <laughs> so if you want to go dance somewhere and like beat bop, somewhere absolutely the best so she's just not a gym girl and she is absolutely right you do not have to go to the gym to lose weight I do think it's important to lift weights you don't have to be a bodybuilder but some form of resistance training so that you can maintain muscle mass which would be very beneficial especially as you age and it's good to get into it while you are young and then my fifth tip is don't focus on food I know this is gonna sound like crazy and because you think if you want to lose weight, you have to track your calories and put them into your phone and measure the ingredients so when I heard this, I was like, all right, here we go. <laughs> I can finally say you're wrong, Blair. How dare you? But she explained what she meant. And while that may work for some people, I feel that it makes me very food conscious and food motivated and restrictive and it's really unhealthy for my own brain. Like I become really obsessed with food to the point where after I finish eating, I'll think about my next meal. So I personally love counting calories. It makes me feel in control. It gives me visuals of what I'm eating on most days. 
but I know some people just can't do it. It really Fs them up mentally and they find a way to lose weight without counting calories. I don't recommend this to my clients because I like to make sure what they're eating so that they get to their goal. But I occasionally get one or two people that say, Michelle, no, I will not count calories. My mental health is way more important. And I say, well, it's up to you to find what works for you. You need to know what you're eating because you have a certain goal. And you know what? Quite a few find a way. As in, they would probably count calories for about a week and make a menu for themselves so they know what to eat. But they still portion and measure out their food. But for some reason, the counting calories every single day really Fs them up. So I hear occasionally what Blair is saying. Counting calories makes them extremely obsessed. And I hear many people from the body positive ED community saying, that counting calories is toxic and eat intuitively. She literally says that counting calories hurts her mentally and she knows this so she doesn't do it and found another way that works for her. And I really don't like being that person because all I think about is calories and food and things like that and I don't like doing that. I rather drink hot water, skip breakfast. And there it is. She's skipping breakfast. Oh wait, I didn't finish the clip. Skip breakfast because I'm not hungry yet. There we go. Um, she said she's not hungry yet. I am so flabbergasted at the people who can skip breakfast because I am not one. But there are so many people who aren't into the breakfast thing. And when I ask, they say I'm just not hungry. So what do I always preach on my channel? If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, then don't. If I'm not hungry, I simply don't eat. If I am, I simply make myself a balanced meal so that I can be full. Of perfect, restrictive, 1300 calorie eating, and then I would have four days of being out on the weekend, enjoying my life and having fun. And that's the balance that really will screw you over because you'll have three days, like a couple days of eating your perfect calories and then you'll have three days of going like double your calories because you're so excited you're finally able to eat. Okay, I hear this a lot with people who count calories. They do great during the weekday and they are super focused on hitting their numbers and then the weekend comes and they throw all of it into the trash. They just lose all control. Here's the thing, that's not the calorie counting's fault. That's one, your fault. The calories didn't tell you to go ape shit on the weekends. That's more of just controlling yourself on the weekends when you probably have more time to just eat. And the second issue that I see with people who just go crazy on the weekends is that they are not eating enough during the week. So by the time the weekend comes, they are starving and ready to just let loose. And they let loose. I was the second one a long time ago and I couldn't figure out how the heck I could pass through the weekend without failing constantly. I simply increased my calories to a slight, slight people calorie deficit and then on the weekends I made sure to prepare some more exciting meals than the week so it feels like I'm having a little cheat and just spicing up my weekend so this part gets a little confusing my tip is for you eat whatever you feel like eating so pretty much the hack here is don't do these oh I'll replace my favorite food with low sugar gluten-free versions of it because it's not going to taste the same and you will still end up craving it and then binging on the real thing anyway instead you should eat what you are craving and eat less of it if you're craving something go eat it don't replace it with anything else if you want McDonald's go through the McDonald's drive through order eat order whatever you want I'm talking if you want a Big Mac and a large fry and a coke order it try to eat half Try to, I'm, I'm serious, try to eat half. That would work for me now, but not when I was still struggling and had no control because my ass is definitely gonna eat all of it. But when I started really dissecting my life, and comparing it to my thin friends, I noticed so many of them would eat out but only eat portions of the meal. If I'm craving pizza, I'll order pizza, I'll eat two slices of my favorite, most favorite caloric pizza ever and I'll put the rest in the fridge. Just put it in the fridge and eat it tomorrow for lunch or tomorrow for dinner. Does that make sense? Like spread it, because then you can eat your favorite meal more times than just one time of binging and loving it and feeling sick after. And it was absolute bonkers to me because I would never. I still don't, that's why I don't eat out often though, but that's something my smaller friends would do. I would eat the whole meal, and in the US, restaurant meals are easily minimum, at least the stuff that I would eat. 1,200 calories, easy, soup and salad. 1,200 calories, I've seen it. And I'll eat it in one sitting, plus my five other meals, which would easily take me up to 3,000 calories, but my thin friends would split theirs up into two or three meals. Blair also said another thing that I very much related to. But when there is snacks in the house, I can eat 1,000 or 2,000 calories in snacks, just while I'm editing, while I'm sitting here, while I'm playing on my phone, and they don't satisfy me. Snacks do nothing for me. So I am very similar, you guys. Ask me, what do you eat for snacks, Michelle? I eat full 
meals. I save most of my calories for meals because if I snack, I'm still hungry. And I end up eating wasted calories that don't do anything for me. I think people took this completely wrong because she said she doesn't like snacks in the house and when there's no snacks, she doesn't eat. But I think she just meant she doesn't eat the snack. If I purposely don't buy snacks, I won't eat them. She doesn't cook at home, so obviously she has to leave her house to go eat. So she just doesn't eat at home because she doesn't cook and she doesn't have the snacks there that doesn't fill her up because she's bougie like that. She don't like to cook, so she walks or Ubers to go get her food. And I don't have time to eat, but like snacks, like popcorn, they, they do, do nothing. nothing. They literally do, they do not fill me up. <laughs> All right, so I watched a little bit of Greg's video and he got mad at this. <laughs> I challenge you, Blair Walnuts, let's see it. Have five to 10 bags of popcorn and then tell me how much you eat afterward. And here's the thing, I love popcorn. It's a fun snack, but does it fill me up? <laughs> It doesn't, and I personally can't eat a lot of it, and I still do not feel full. I'll force myself to feel like I'm full because I just ate a shit ton of calories, but could I eat another meal? Oh, most definitely I could. And if you want to challenge that, I would literally eat whole cheesecakes and still be hungry. Popcorn will do absolutely nothing for me. I do like my popcorn, by the way. I just don't snack very often. I need a full meal, and I very much related to Blair in this one. I hate snacks. I'm a snack hater, I don't get it. Same girl, same. There's no calorie counting, no restricting, no gym, and nothing wild. Once again, I want to emphasize that there is restricting. She would have to restrict calories if she had lost weight. Just as when I lose weight, I restrict calories. Another thing Blair promoted is diuretics that she got from a pharmacy. Um, there's some like water diuretic pills because I store a lot of water in my legs. Like you can just tell they just get swollen. Now people were saying that's what anorexic people do they abuse diuretics she didn't say the name of it but I usually recommend taking a natural diuretic called dandelion root tea or like dandelion dandelion root pills in general they're about five dollars or something from Walmart it seems to help me when I am bloated or around my period like I've said 500 million times I have endometriosis and PCOS so around my period it can give me a little relief and make my nine month pregnant looking gut look like four months on my period especially when I like fly a lot or during my period um, or when I take birth control or switch my birth control, I get really kind of swollen. So my final opinion, does Blair have an eating disorder? I don't know. I can't tell from this video, like all the internet doctors seem to be able to. I personally do many of these tips. Just because someone who struggled with anorexia drinks hot water doesn't mean every single person who drinks hot water now has an ED. I really think she doesn't use the lingo or explain things in detail in the way that you guys want her to, but guess what? She's not a professional. So, uh, yeah. Also, I think people are upset that she was an already small woman who decided to lose the extra body fat and now she's skinnier, not cooking, and dancing around on the beach. And whenever skinny people lose body fat, people scream ED. Hell, people say that to me when I get a little bit leaner. So imagine a skinny fat chick who doesn't put on muscle, what they will say to her. Exactly what people are saying in the comment sections of the response videos. And probably in my comment section video right now because I know you guys are very emotional when it comes to ED. But I just ask maybe think about other people, you know, uh, people like me who struggled about overeating. <laughs> we exist. Uh, these tips helped me in my past. I personally think many people are projecting their mental issues onto Blair. I have never seen so many people in the comment section scream, you're promoting an eating disorder on a video where she says she eats 1,500 to 2,000 calories of protein, fruits, and vegetables and won't eat a whole pizza and instead has two slices. I've noticed a lot lately that when it comes to weight loss content, people will scream, think of the people who have EDs. If they see this, it will make them relapse or feel bad about themselves. Look, that's horrible, but it's also not anyone else's problem. It's yours. I have gotten it before on my channel. Counting calories will cause people to be obsessed and you said to reduce calories, that makes people wanna starve themselves. Nowhere in my videos did I ever say to starve yourself. Nowhere in my video did I ever say you have to count calories. It's what I did. It's what I recommend if you want to be aware of what you're eating. Blair never said to strip your calories to absolutely nothing. Make sure to drink water if you're hungry and starve yourself. I didn't see that in the video. 
at all. She didn't do the best job explaining certain things, but she really, honestly, when I watch her videos, she doesn't explain a lot, ever. I looked up pro Anna type shit, and from the comments, you would think that that's what she was saying in the video. Now, do I think she went through a breakup and probably not eating as much as she did when she was with Wet Saki? Yes. Was she a naturally smaller framed girl who lost a lot of her body fat? Yes. Is she telling her young female fans to not eat? No. So please tell me if I'm wrong, where in the video did she say to not eat and lower your calories to nothing? Similar to the people who accused me of promoting eating disorders because I count calories, excuse you, I am not responsible for people who have eating disorder thoughts. Go to therapy and stay off videos that talk about weight loss if it affects you that much and you can't seem to see the difference between pro Anna type stuff and people just trying to lose a couple of pounds. <laughs> Anyways guys, I hope you really liked today's video and I'm really proud of my before and afters and I feel happier and healthier this way and way more energized. So um, I love you a lot and I will see you guys tomorrow. Love you a lot, wanna out, bye. Well you guys, thank you so much for joining me in Bedrock today with your modern stone age all grown up pebbles. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Remember, we all come from different backgrounds and not everything on the internet is for you. So if something negatively affects you, don't click on the thumbnail. But I'm looking forward to all of your comments. Remember, you do not have to be a size two. Having big biceps that scares away all the boys is great to have, but not needed to be healthy. And I want all my watchers to be healthy, balanced, happy, and hot. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrum.